There are some stories becoming much clearer in some places. Josh McDaniels looks like he's going to be the Raiders head coach. Mm. Did not know that was going to happen or expect that to happen, especially just a couple years after Josh McDaniels turns his plane around mid-flight over to Indianapolis to announce him being a head coach. And everybody just assumed that Kraft and Belichick and everybody said, why don't you just come on back home? I will pay you some money. You'll be the next head coach here. Everybody assumed that was kind of the arranged marriage between Josh McDaniels and the Patriots. Now I guess things are very heating up for him to be the Las Vegas Raiders' next head coach. All of the assistants that Bill Belichick has had that have gone on to be head coaches, including Josh McDaniels whenever he was with the Broncos, have not had much success. No. I mean, it is not great at all. Winning percentage for all of them, 41%. Ooh. Think about that. Not good. Not great. That's a lot. There's seven of them that have been assistants that have come from the Bill Belichick tree. This is via Josh Dubo's tweet, at Josh Dubo AP. Okay, oh, there you go. Oh, Holy shit. It. Holy shit. Associated dude. press. Yeah, he's, he's part of the press that is pretty, associated with each other. That's yeah, right. Pretty, wow. Pretty. And they have a lot of power, the Associated Press. Oh, a oh, ton. Yeah. I believe they also got photographers. They got their own line of photographers. Uh -huh. You bet. Yeah. Hey, Josh Dubo don't fuck around. No. It's like an AP class. So whenever he, yeah, for sure. A lot of AP classes. Right? A lot Lots of them. Yeah. To get into the AP. Okay. Actually, a part of the AP interview process is going back to see if you were in AP classes because you That's were right. an AP person from the beginning. Okay get into the AP. This is a fucking different level of yeah. press. Wow. That's right. the associated one. Mm -hmm. So Josh Dubo was the one who put the tweet out and said, Bill Belichick, seven Patriots assistants, Josh McDaniels, Romeo Cronell, uh, Eric Mangini, Bill O'Brien, Matty Patricia, Brian Flores, and Joe Judge have a combined win percentage of 41 in five playoff berths in 27 seasons as head coaches. O'Brien had four of them uh, whenever he was down there in Houston. Mangini had one when he was at Cleveland. That's crazy to even think about. I thought yeah. that was just a massive failure. Yeah. Was it there or was it somewhere else? Jets? Jets, maybe? I thought it was Cleveland, and that was the only... Uh playoff berth they had and then they got joe thomas the next year oh, okay well anyways whatever the case that whole coaching tree stinks and we don't know why none of it makes sense to me you would assume if you were around the greatest of all time both general manager and head coach osmosis would funnel through and you would at least soak up a little bit of goodness but i think what happens is every coach that leaves the patriot way uh, goes to another place and tries to implement their version of the Patriot way. But the problem with them implementing their Patriot way is they don't have the resume of the fucking Patriot way and they don't have success early. So it's hard to continue to be a dickhead, hard ass, this is how you win. I've seen it in New England coach. If you lose, it's just a tough thing to do. Teams and players and even your assistant coaches and equipment managers and trainers, everybody's like, hey, pal, we'll continue to live this miserable life as long as you win. But if you lose, there is other ways to do this. We have experience and we ain't doing it anymore. And that, I believe, has been the problem with the coaches that have left New England and gone elsewhere. I understand that they've seen how success is, but that's after 20 some years of building that culture. I'd assume Bill Belichick was a little different mm -hmm. his first couple years as a head coach than the culture is now whenever he was trying to implement it. Maybe he came in and was just an immediate hard ass to everybody in that whole thing, but he's also a brainiac. So they're probably mm -hmm. winning games and there's probably a lot of hope. If you come in, you're a hard ass and you stink, you're going to lose the entire facility. For whatever reason, the Belichick tree has been very fruitless whenever it comes yeah. to other head coaches around the NFL. But maybe McDaniels with another attempt out there in the Raiders with Derek Carr at quarterback for at least another year. It's being reported that Josh McDaniels is, I think, a fan of Derek Carr. And then some GM that they're thinking about bringing in is also a fan of Derek Carr. Richie Basaccia, a hell of a run, though. Yes, yes. good run. Thank you, Richie. Thank, Thank, you, Richie. Richie. Thank you, Richie. Speaking of the Patriots, is McDaniels uh, actually going to be the head coach in Vegas? And will that bring Elliot Wolf over there to be the GM? And also, what happened with Gerard Mayo? He just kind of, his name has fallen out of the uh, coaching loop here. Uh, all right, so for Mayo, sounded like he had good interviews in Denver and the Raiders, but obviously hasn't got didn't get the Broncos job, hasn't gotten the Raiders job. He is young, and you know sometimes it takes a couple cracks at it. Uh, I think he will be a head coach, just probably not yet. Uh, also, you know, we'll see if he ends up with a different title in New England, maybe defensive coordinator. We'll see what they do. Huh. Um, out, but I don't think you know, Mayo's probably not going anywhere. As far as McDaniel's, I'm not saying this is done because it's not done, but they would not have made a request to interview him unless they thought there was a good chance he would take it if offered. And he doesn't go there unless he thought that there was a good chance they would offer. So there's 
before all of this happens, both sides know there's mutual interest. So he goes down there. He's going to have dinner with Brass tonight, have an interview tomorrow. Like, I think both sides say, all right, if this goes well, then we might do this thing. Wow. Um, his GM would be Dave Ziegler, who's the de facto GM in New England but doesn't have the title, who kind of led all of that. Uh, yeah, kind of led all of that you know, free agent spending in the draft last year. Now, quick question. Casario was an ipso facto GM for New England. He right. leaves, he gets a GM job. Ziggler, another human I've never heard of. I assume people have. He's ipso facto general manager up there while Bill Belichick yep. is the general manager. How's that work? Because I know like offense coordinators that don't call actual plays. They're just like a uh, figurehead offensive coordinator, but they're more so like quarterback coach and maybe they're part of the planning and scheming, but the head coach is the play caller. What are those titles and how, how does that whole thing work over there? I mean, Bill Belichick is in charge in New England. But what Dave oh, yeah. Ziegler did was basically all of the groundwork and all of the recommendations. And then in the end, Belichick right. says, like, yes or no. So he kind of. So he's like he the president. Does. He's like the president more so. And people pitch from different buckets of the right. company. Yeah, I think that's probably right. And then but Bill has final say. So you could do all this. And he just goes, nah. And it's like, OK, well, that's that's that. <laughs> Legend. But more so than ever. I mean, Ziegler had a lot of say in New England. But ultimately, he's not the GM, so he is allowed to go to Vegas for what I'm sure would be a lot of money, um, unless the Patriots step up and try to keep him. No. Okay, so isn't that what the Patriots did to Josh McDaniels when he turned the plane around here in Indianapolis? Everybody just assumed that Josh McDaniels was the head coach in waiting for the New England Patriots. Is this because now that Bill Belichick's going to coach for another 10 years with Mac Jones at quarterback? Or what do you think it is that Josh McDaniels got up out of his bed in New England, in which he has found home for a long time after the Denver Broncos then he's gone back and has... Re reluctantly even been in the coaching conversation, I think, anywhere, yeah. hasn't really done it. Why, why do you think Vegas, and why do you think now? Um, this is a great opportunity. I mean, Vegas is a spot where, like, had John Gruden not gotten in trouble and done all the things that he did many years ago and ended up resigning, like, you could win in Vegas for a while, I think. You got that they didn't draft great the last couple of years, but you got a bunch of good pieces. You have a quarterback who's definitely good enough. And you got some young, young talent like Max Crosby and others. Um, they could be good for a little bit. And, you know, if you take over a team that has a head coach vacancy but has a quarterback, you can win. So, and, and Mark Davis will spend and cares a lot about it and will let them do their thing. So, like, that's a good mix, right? So I think why now is because, like, this is a really good opportunity. It really is. Huh. Ian, do you think the Raiders have – really wanted McDaniels all along. They were just trying to gauge his interest if he would leave New England. And the Harbaugh shit was all fake. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was fake from the Raiders' side. I believe Harbaugh's side was kind of like, hey, the Raiders look pretty good. Like, uh, so, so, like, Harbaugh you know, went out the Raiders dance floor. Mm -hmm. Harbaugh went out on the dance floor and did this number day. here. Mm -hmm. And be interesting. Nobody. he was ah. just standing there all by himself. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Yeah. Wow. But he's got Michigan, so. Yeah, not the bell of the ball, though. Michigan. People like Michigan. 